This is the Airbus A322, carrying over 250 passengers to a range of 5,000 nautical miles, this future stretch of the A321 could be an absolute game changer for the aviation industry. But this plane of the future might never be built by Airbus, leaving the goal wide open for Boeing to sweep in and reclaim its short haul title. What is this plane? Why is it so revolutionary? And why is Airbus choosing not to build it? Let's find out. Airbus has been very clever with its A320 range, delivering several different derivatives to meet varying market demand. These versions are bigger or smaller, with different passenger capabilities and ranges depending on their customer airline's use case. For example, they created the smallest version of the A320, the A318, for regional routes in Europe, and then up to the fantastic A321 XLR stretch for long-range single-aisle routes. But questions are raised when you look at their portfolio in detail. As there have been two shrinks of the flexible A320 frame so far, and only one stretch, why can't there be a second stretch beyond the A321? This hypothetical new version, which we have called the A322 or the A321++, would be lengthened by 4 meters and would allow up to 24 more passengers than the original A321. If airlines wanted it, the plane could carry 260 passengers in a strict high-density configuration or a very flexible 220 passengers with two classes, including lie-flat business class seats. We have already seen JetBlue put such a concept in their A321 narrowbody for flights across the Atlantic, and I can't imagine that they and others wouldn't snap up this hypothetical A322. Here's why it would be so popular. As the plane would be heavier, but without the extra power, with an M tow of only 101 tons, its range would be limited initially to only 3,500 nautical miles, a thousand nautical miles shorter than the long range XLR. This, however, would make it operate perfectly fine for most airline use cases, such as Los Angeles to New York, Sydney to Melbourne, London to New York, Dubai to Mumbai, and many more. This would make the aircraft perfect for that middle-of-the-market gap between narrow-body aircraft and wide-body planes, with advantages of both. But this range could be further improved with better engine technology and better wings. A 5-7% better engine than the A321neo engines and a bit higher thrust of 35 to 37,000 pounds would allow it to push aggressively into this longer range market. Pratt & Whitney have proposed a 35,000 PW1135G engine, but the timing is still unknown when that will actually reach the market. Airbus has also been working on new wings for this design, like the one for the A350, but for the entire A320 series. But again, the timelines for this market entry are unknown. The deal gets better for airlines with the A322. If the plane was built on the same production lines as the A320 series, costs would be reduced to around 50% of a twin aisle counterpart, like the slower to sell, and might I add, older A330 series. This makes it a no-brainer for airlines looking for bigger capacity aircraft, but who don't want to commit to the wide body design, or perhaps can't afford to with their networks? like Aegean in Greece, who operates mainly to smaller island airports that can't take wide-body aircraft. We should also mention that the secondary market for narrow-body aircraft, like the A321neo, are hot right now, and are far more lucrative 
than the wide body market. You can check this out on a slightly out of date on how much aircraft costs right here on the channel. Lastly, this plane could be built within the next five years, beating rival Boeing's proposed new clean sheet design, the Boeing 797, to the market and securing the European plane maker's empire for the next few decades to come. The Airbus A322neo should be the perfect replacement for the stretched Boeing 757-300, even though it is not as popular as the Dash 200 back in the old days. If it were to happen, we could imagine that Delta and United would probably be the first two customers with priorities to order this A322 to replace its aging Boeing 757-300 fleet before any other airlines want to order them. It would also be a stopgap for airlines operating the 767 who haven't yet committed to bigger aircraft like the 787 or the A330 series. But then again, perhaps Airbus won't build this plane at all. And after this break, I'll tell you exactly why. According to some, and this is entering rumor territory here, Airbus was about to build this A322 when it was also pitching the XLR, two versions of the A321neo. However, remember those engines and the new carbon fiber wing that would need to be built to reach that 5,000 nautical mile distance? They don't exist yet, and therefore the plane would be too limited in range for customers. With the XLR version also entering the market at the same time, and these new technologies too unknown, Airbus realized that this so-called Game Changer A322 wouldn't beat any competition, and it would also cannibalize sales from the XLR itself. Plus, we have to keep in mind that Airbus doesn't actually want to step on Boeing's toes at this point. The A320 series is currently more popular than the 737 and it is more breathing room for future updates to design. Unlike the 737, which we can agree, thanks to the Max, has reached its hopeful final alliteration. But this gets deeper, so it's time to put on your tinfoil hats. Follow me on the logic here. If Airbus were to build the A322 and completely cut Boeing out of the short haul market, there is really nothing stopping Boeing from dropping everything to build its new 797 as soon as possible, putting Airbus on the back foot and scrambling to come up with a new short haul idea. Perhaps in a more sinister way, Airbus is waiting for Boeing to design the 797 or the 757 replacement aircraft and then it would simply release the A322 at a lower cost and quicker to the market. Without the 797 existing at the moment or even remotely ready to come to the market, Airbus has nothing to gain by building the A322. There are also some other issues with the A322 design, such as a lack of toilets or enough galley space, let alone flight attendants, once you start to get up to these bigger passenger numbers. This would all need to be worked out before the aircraft could be certified. Plus, having a new wing isn't such an easy upgrade to this one plane, and would likely require the entire family line of A320s to be redesigned. This includes new wheels, new engines, and new landing gears. And if you're going to redesign the entire line, at that point, isn't it a new aircraft series entirely? At the end of the day, we know that Boeing has this plane design in its back pocket, but we don't know for sure why it hasn't built it already. But we do know that when Boeing finally decides to bring a new short haul aircraft to the market, Airbus will be ready to pounce with the A322. Thanks so much for watching today's video on the A322. It's a very interesting topic and something that should be discussed and has been discussed for years. Airbus is a very large company and is always considering new concepts of the market. The A322 is no exception. And likely if Airbus were to make a new short airplane, then the A322 concept will involve in that direction. And I do apologize if the sound today is a little bit strange. Upstairs, they're currently completely renovating and it sounds terrible. So thanks for your patience with putting up with some slight audio issues and enjoying this new video. 
So let me know down in the comments what you think of today's video. And if you'd like to support the channel, I also have a link to a Patreon where you can come on and see videos early and also a link to our Discord where you can come and chat to me and discuss things, all things aviation. Thank you so much for watching.